by saying that, um, you know, websites used to work in a very specific way. If you look at the old version of the APMA website, or if you look at the uh, Wild Foot and Ankle Institute website, um, it was very much um, all about just information. Um, there was obviously ways to maybe connect um, and put a phone number on uh, for clinics, but that was the way um, you just kind of, it's basically a brochure um, to potential patients or to your current patients to find information about you and your clinic. And to be honest, back then it wasn't very hard, we're talking the early 2000s, for your clinic to rank very well uh, locally in your area. So, you know, that was not a big issue. It's only been over the last five or 10 years with the introduction of things like Google My Business and other types of online um, websites where now it's much more competitive to rank in your city um, and also to like show up, you know, in the top three or, you know, having a website that does more than just kind of have a, a lot of information about your practice on the website, something that's more optimized to try to help patients see that you as a professional and see what you do for them um, and then take the necessary actions to make it a point with your clinic um, and kind of doing that. Um, so, like I said, there's been a shift and a change. Now websites basically, you know, it's how visible you are online, you know, through Google and other search, um, search engines is really important. So having a website that's built to show up there and that has to kind of be baked into the website, obviously as well, you want to build trust with your website. Um, you know, do you have uh, examples of reviews? Is there a picture of you and, uh, of you treating your ideal patient? Is there kind of logos or kind of things that build trust? You know, are you a member of ACFAST or APMA or your state local association that helps kind of build trust to show them that you are the expert by just glancing at your website? Also, websites can be more functional now. You know, instead of your your uh, front desk person have to be on the on a phone call and taking uh, a credit card number from a patient. Now your invoice can show a patient that they can pay online. So they're able to pay their bills or their co-pays 24 seven uh, through your website. This also comes down to scheduling as well. There's obviously different ways as far as um, doing online scheduling, but one way is, um, you know, whether it be a form or it ties directly into EMR, um, there's ways of making these efficiencies through your website uh, which will make it uh, easier for the patients to schedule and easier for them to get onto your calendar um, in the ways you want to. Obviously, having control of your schedule and who you see and don't see or what kind of conditions is up to you, but there's ways with software in your website to kind of custom make that now. So we're talking about today about kind of your online foundation, and that's what I see as your website. Um, you know, there's obviously different other parts we're not going to cover today. Um, things like search and SEO and discovery, you know, we're not going to go super in depth as far as, you know, reputation or online reviews and things like that. We won't go into uh, email marketing, but just know that your website is kind of that foundational piece of your entire online presence. It's kind of your home on the internet. Um, and it's a really important thing to make sure that it captures the attention of your current, you know, helps your current patients, but also captures the attention of potential patients to your practice. So when we talk about your website, the first thing that we need to look at is like, what is the kind of first impression that your website makes? Because someone might search for you on Google and go directly to your website. And when they look at your website, you know, what do they see? Is there signs of you treating someone? Is there imagery of you and your staff? Um, you know, is it authentic? Is it a stock image? Uh, do you have ways for them to interact with you? So that jump from Google to, to your website is really important because if, people don't spend a lot of time on your website, they, then Google won't want to send people there. So that's why it's important to have a really solid first impression uh, when they come and they land on your website. As far as the overall kind of ownership uh, of your website, uh, you know, like there's different platforms out there. There's Patient Pop, Facebook, Google My Business. It's important to know that um, certain uh, types of websites don't always allow you to own the content or own the URL of your website. That's patient pop. You don't want to build your website somewhere where um, you don't have complete kind of control over the way it looks and the way it, um, patients interact with it. So that's important. And then there's the act that basically your website is kind of a central hub for all of your marketing, whether it's your emails, your blogs, everything should point back to your website. Uh, so it's as valuable as possible. It's also to think about the kind of patient journey, right? You wanna take someone from a stranger to becoming a loyal practice promoter. 
And the website is an important component of that because they'll interact with it before and after um, an appointment with you and having a kind of a, a strong consistency with the way that your online presence is, is really important. So there's kind of two approaches to websites. Like I talked about the old way was the kind of set it and forget it kind of brochure website. And that's fine. Um, you'll get a little bit of traffic from that, um, but it's not really the way things are moving currently with websites. Usually if you want your website to kind of uh, attract more patients and you want it to be more uh, engaging and basically help prompt uh, action with people, you really need to take a proactive approach with your website. 